In today's video, we are creating this typewriter effect with a blinking cursor. To get started, drag a fusion composition into your timeline. Then head over to the Fusion tab. Now let's start by creating the typewriter effect. I will get a text plus node and connect it to the media out. Then I will type something into the text box, for example, typewriter effect. I will choose a font. You can use a typewriter font, but I will use this one. Then let's head over to the maybe the 15th frame and place a keyframe on the right on attribute. And with this keyframe, I will move the end value to zero. Then let's move the cursor maybe to frame 30. And let's move the end value to a point where the first word is fully shown. Here. And then I will move the cursor another 15 frames or maybe a few less because the second word is smaller than the first one. So let's put it to frame 40. And now let's pull the end value all the way to the end. If we play this back, there's a few frames where nothing happens and then the first word appears and then the second word appears. Yeah. And um, we could also do a little pause in here. So let's go one frame further and place another keyframe on the same value. And now in the spline, which is this window down here, you can open it by clicking this button. You can get the last two keyframes and let's move them a little bit to the back. And now if we play this back, we have a pause between the words. Perfect. Now let's add the blinking cursor. To design it, we will use a background node for the color. So let's put it into a node graph and then with the color pipette, let's just choose the white. You could also click in here and choose another color. And if we have a look at this, if you select it and press two, you will see it in the viewer. It's just a white screen and we want to cut out a cursor of this. So we need a mask and I will take the rectangle mask and connect it to the blue input of the background. These blue inputs are always the mask inputs. And now you can already see that we have this small rectangle and not the full screen white. So let's change the height and the width and make this smaller. like this. And now let's see how this looks in comparison to our text. So we need to connect it and we can't connect it directly. So we take our merge node and drag it on top of this line. And now we can connect this background node to the merge node. As you can see, the text is not showing and that's because we are still viewing only this node. So Let's change it to the media out, select it and press two. So it's in our viewer. And now we can adjust the rectangle even more, maybe decrease the height a little bit more and the width. I think like this, it looks fine. Now we will take a transform node, which we put on this line. And with this transform node, we will move around the cursor. So let's get to the first frame where our first letter appears, which is frame 16. Then let's move one frame to the front and move this over here. Let's check where it has to be. So the T I appears here and I usually like to place it in the middle of the letter. And now we can go back 
one frame and place the keyframe for the transform. The keyframe will be on the center X attribute, so just click this little rectangle. Then we move the playhead to the end of the first word, which is here. And now we can use this arrow to drag this cursor all the way to the right. And because we had a keyframe on this, it also created a second keyframe automatically. And if we play this back, we can see it writes out our text. If you play it slowly, you can see sometimes it's not fast enough. And to adjust for this, we can go maybe to the middle and correct it. And you can do as many correction steps as you want. But I think I will leave this at one correction step and two keyframes. Now let's animate the second word. So let's move over to the first letter, which appears here. Let's go back one single frame, place a keyframe. And then let's go to the back. And after the T appears, I will move this over here. Let's check if this works. Yes. Do we need a correction? No, I don't think so. And if you play back the whole animation, it looks like this, which is already quite good. But let's go to the settings of the transform node and click this checkbox to add motion blur. Now when the cursor moves, it will be a little bit blurry. You can leave this unchecked or you can check this. It's personal preference. But you might say there's something missing. The cursor isn't blinking and that's what we are going to do now. And this is really a simple step. So let's go to the first frame and on, to, and on the rectangle node, you can see there's this level slider. And if you pull this down, our, our cursor disappeared. And we, if we pull this up, it is fully white and fully visible. So we can animate the slider to do simply this. And you don't want to place every single keyframe for this, so we can loop it and I will show you how. Let's start by placing a keyframe on level with the value one. Then I will move a few frames forward, maybe let's say five frames. One, two, three, four, five. Then I will place another keyframe and move forward one single frame, one. Here, I will drag the slider all the way down to zero and you can inspect the spline here, our value is at one. And after this frame, it drops to zero. Now at zero, we will go forward another five frames. One, two, three, four, five. And here we will place another keyframe with the value zero. Now we can go one frame forward and place it at one again. Now we have this in our spline graph. And if we want to loop it, we can select all the keyframes. And down here, we will press this icon, set loop. And as you can see, it loops it until the end of this composition. And if you play this back, our cursor blinks. And if this blinking is too fast for you, you can just go ahead select these keyframes again and now you will select this node. Now you will select this icon which is a time stretcher and stretch the keyframes a little bit. And now it will be blinking a little bit slower. And that's already it for this tutorial. 
If you liked it, feel free to watch another one and I will see you there.